Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and this is Indices as part of my IGCSE exam question series where I go through every topic and I do exam questions that are common and are tricky. Now, I found indices quite difficult to place in terms of difficulty because the introduction questions are quite straightforward, whereas the tricky questions are really quite challenging. So have a go at both the common ones and the tricky ones and see how you get on. Let's get into it. Okay, so some straightforward questions here. When the uh, bases are the same, so we've got t's here, and we divide them, we subtract the powers. So this is going to give me t to the 9 minus 3, which is 6. And when, again, the bases are the same, in this case w, and we're multiplying, we add the powers. So this will give me 12. Here, when we are cubing, this is the same as writing out 5 xy squared times 5xy squared times 5xy squared. So in terms of the number, we're going to get 5 times 5 times 5, or 5 cubed, which is 125. Most people forget to cube the, that 5. And then we're going to have x cubed, so we're going to have an x and an x and an x, so that's x cubed. And we have y squared, which is cubed. So when we have brackets like this, we multiply the two powers together to give me 6. And you can see that's going to be squared, squared, and squared. So when you add those powers, we get 2 plus 2 plus 2. So it's 6. OK, next question. We've got a fraction here. So first off, we look at the numbers. And we just simply do 15 divided by 5, which is 3. We then look at the k's, and we have k to the 4 divided by k to the 1. And in this case, when we divide, we subtract the powers. So we get 4 minus 1, which is 3. So k to the 3. And over here, we have m to the 3 minus, oh, sorry, divided by m squared. So we're going to minus the powers. So 3 minus 2 is just 1. And we just write, so just m. OK, key one to remember for this one, and that anything to the power of 0 is 1. No matter what it is, if it's to the power of 0, the final answer is 1. Here we're cubing again, and we've got brackets. So let's try and do this quickly as possible by taking 3 and cubing it to make 27. And then we multiply the powers here. So 2 times 3 is 6, so it's x to the 6. And 5 times 3 is 15, so it's y to the 15. OK, next one we have a similar question, but we've got to the power of a half here. So the first thing we do is the number, 16 to the half. Well, whenever I raise something to the power of a half, it's the same as square rooting that thing. And the square root of 16 is 4. So we write 4 here. And next we have x to the 8 to the power of a half. So we can just multiply those powers to give me x to the 4. And again, we've got y to the 6 to the power of a half, so we could just multiply those along to get y free. And that's complete. Okay, getting slightly more trickier now, but we've got the same uh, type scenario where we've got a bracket and we've got a power outside. So what we need to do is just multiply the powers again. So 12 times 3 quarters is 9, and 8 times 3 quarters is 6. OK, now we're getting to these questions where you need to rewrite your bases. And by bases, I mean the numbers in which we're taking powers of. So you can see here that we've got two of them have base 3, but this has base 9. So instead, what we could do is we could write the base 9 term as 3 squared, then to the power of 9. OK, so this gives me 3 over x. And multiplying out those two brackets will give me 3 to the 2y. And then when I'm dividing 3's, I subtract the powers. So I get 3x to the minus 2y. And all of this is equal to 3 to the n. And now that we have base 3 on both sides, it must follow that the two powers must be equal to each other. So we write that n is equal to x minus 2y. And that question is complete. 
Okay, now we're getting trickier still, um, and we have, first off, we have this. Let's do the quarter first. Now, the quarter means the fourth root. So when I'm looking at the number there, I've got to take the fourth root of 256. So on my calculator, to do that button, I'll press Shift, and then the X to the square there, which gives me this uh, ability to take the higher roots. So fourth root of 256, and that's equal to four. So that number there will be four. And now, uh, again, we've got these uh, powers and then to the power of something else. So we just multiply. So we do 20 to the power, uh, sorry, 20 times a quarter, which is five. And then on the bottom, we do y to the, uh, to the quarter, y to the eight to the quarter. So we times the powers. That gives me uh, eight times a quarter is two. But we haven't talked about the elephant in the room here, which is this negative power. So what does a negative power do? Well, it takes the reciprocal of whatever you are raising to that power. And the reciprocal means that you basically flip over a fraction. So this becomes y squared over 4x to the 5. And that is complete. OK, here's another example. Again, I'm going to ignore the negative and just focus on the power of 2 thirds. So let's take 27 to the power of 2 thirds. Well, I could do that by typing on my calculator 27 to the power of 2 thirds, just like that. Or I could think about it as the uh, denominator of 3 there, or cube root, which will mean 27 cube rooted is 3. And then the numerator of 2 will square, so 3 squared is 9. So I should get 9. Perfect. The a's, I could just multiply the powers. So 12 times uh, 2 thirds is, um, is 8. So that's a to the 8. And 15 uh, times 2 thirds is uh, 10. So that's t to the 10. But again, I've still got this negative power here. So what does the negative power do? It flips over, takes the reciprocal, so I get t to the 10 over 9 to the 8. OK, getting trickier still, we have uh, 3 to the power of 2x, where we have a is 3 to the x and b is 3 to the y. And express in terms of a or b or a and b. OK, so what is 3 to the 2x? So that's the same as 3 to the x times 3 to the x because when we multiply 3's like this, we add the powers, which would give us 2x. And we know that 3 to the x is a, so it's a times a, so we can call this a squared. Okay, we've got 3 to the x plus 4y. So let's split this, split this up. That's 3 to the x times 3 to the 4y. Again, because then we just add them and that would give us our x plus 4y. Which is the same as 3 to the x times 3 to the y times, uh, sorry, 3 to the y to the power of 4. Again, let's check this works. So the brackets there, we'd multiply those two together to give us 4y. And then because we're timesing it by 3 to the x, we'd add the power on. So it'd be x plus 4y. So we have an A multiplied by a B to the 4. So that's A, B to the 4. Now we have 3Y to the so 3 to the Y minus 1, which is the same as 3 to the Y divided by 3 to the 1. And 3 to the Y we know is B, so that's just B over 3, or 1 third b. OK, great. Um, the next question says we have the same relationship, a and b, and it tells us what a times b is and what a squared b is. And now it's asked us to work out the values of x and y. OK, so this is a simultaneous equation, and what we could do is we could take the second equation and divide it by the first. 
So that would give me a squared b divided by ab, which is 177147 divided by 2187. So on the left, I'm going to have an a squared divided by an a, which is just going to give me an a, and a b divided by b will cancel. So that's just going to give me a. So I'm going to do 177147 one, seven, one, over 2187. So that's going to be 81. Okay, so now looking back at equation number one, we can see that we can have 81b is equal to 2187. So that's going to give me that b is equal to 7, uh, sorry, 27. And these are all uh, powers um, of 3. So 3 to the x equals 81. And I know that 3 to the 4 is equal to uh, 81. So x is 4. And over here we have 3 to the y is equal to 27. And I know that 3 cubed is 27. So y is equal to 3. OK, here's the next uh, challenging question. And uh, the first thing to spot is that these can all be written as powers of 2. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have 2, 2 to the y, times 2, 3y plus 2, is equal to 2 to the 3 to the power 5y, over 2 to the 2 to the power n. OK, let's look at the left-hand side. Because these 2s are multiplied together, we can add their powers. So that's going to give me 5y plus 2. And over here on the top, because we've got a uh, nested power, we've got to the 3 and then to the 5y, we multiply those together. So that's going to give me to the 15y. And here again, we're going to multiply those together to give me 2 to the 2n. And now looking at the right hand side, we have um, a division, which means we're going to subtract the powers. So this is going to give me 2 to the 15y minus 2n. And now we have 2 to the something is equal to 2 to the something else. So those two somethings must be equal to each other. So I can say that 5y plus 2 is equal to 15y minus 2n. And it's asking me to find an expression for n. So I have to make n the subject. So what I can do is add 2n to the left side to make it positive and then subtract 5y from both sides and 2 from both sides to get 10y minus 2. Dividing through by 2 gives me 5y minus 1 and we are done with that question. And this is in my opinion the hardest IGCSE indices question at least I've ever seen. It's a real tricky question, so give it a go and then watch for the solution. What makes this question really hard is the fact that you've got um, threes raised to a power and you've got two uh, raised to a power. And then you've also got this 18 and this 12 down the bottom. Now, 18 has prime factors of 2 and 3 and 3. So we can split that up into 2s and 3s, which is going to be helpful. So let's rewrite this using 2s and 3s as our bases. So 18 is 2 times by uh, 3 squared, and that's to the power of 4n. And we've also got 2 here, well that's 3n squared minus 18n. And then here I've got 3 and that's 2 minus 8n. And on the bottom, I have 12 squared, and 12 as prime factors is 2 and, f uh, sorry, 2 and 6, and 2 and 3. So I could write that as 2 squared times 3, all squared, and all of this is equal to m, which we're told is 2. 
Okay, let's get rid of the denominators. I don't like having denominators. So I can multiply that to this side, like that. And what will that give us? Well, at the moment, I've got 2 squared squared. So that's 2 to the 4. And when I bring it up here and times it by 2 to the 1, I'm going to get 2 to the 5. And I've also got 3 squared. So when I multiply it along there, I'm going to get 3 squared on this side. Okay, great. I've got rid of the denominator. And I'm going to expand out this bracket here because I've got 2 to the 4n. And I've got 3 squared to the 4n, which becomes 3 to the 8n. And here I've got 2 to the 3n squared minus 18n. And then I have 3 to the 2 minus 8n. Okay. And now what I can do is I can uh, simplify the uh, twos on this side, collect those, and the threes on this side, collect those. So what is that going to give us? Let's just write this out again. And let's look at the twos. When I, I'm multiplying these twos together so the powers add, so I'm going to get 2 to the 3n squared, and then 4n minus 18n is minus 14n. And the threes, again, when I multiply them, the powers add. So I get 8n plus 2 minus 8n. So that's just plus 2. So it's just 3 squared. Okay, great. Next thing I could do is I have 3 squared on both sides. So I could divide 3 by 3 squared on both sides. And now I've got 2 to the something is equal to 2 to the something. Well, that means that these somethings must be the same. So I can write over here that 5 must equal 3n squared minus 14n. I can set that equal to 0. And I can solve that quadratic by factorizing. So it's going to be a 3n and an n. And my factors are... Um, need to multiply to make 5. So I'm going to want minus 5 over here because that's going to make minus 15 and then plus 1 here and that will make minus 14 in the middle and I factorize that perfectly. So that tells me that either 3n plus 1 equals 0 or n minus 5 equals 0. So therefore 3n equals minus 1 so n equals minus a third or n is equal to 5. And those are the values of n for which this question works. So there you have it. That is indices done. What a question that was. Subscribe, like, and share. Bye for now.